I say man a lot. Like I'll say hey man or thanks man, and I can't really get rid of it. Like you do like a Jamaican man? I must be man. I, I just see. I did it again. Uh, do you think it affects how people perceive you? Call from Nathan Hoxtable. To accept. Hello. Hey, how's it going? What's up, Nathan? Not much. How you doing, man? I'm hanging in there. What's going on with you? Uh, not much. Hey, I there was something I wanted to call and talk to you about. Um, yeah, please. So, um, I have this weird addiction, and it it only happens with my friends for a while, but then it happens in real life where I say "man" a lot. Like I'll say "Hey, man," or "Thanks, man," and I can't really get rid of it. Like, like you do, like a Jamaican man. I, I must be man. I, I just see. I did it again. Uh, what do you think is causing you to do this? Probably just like repetition. I don't know. I've done it so much that it's like literally ingrained in my mind now. Um, how how long have you been? saying man for um probably like two or three years at this point has anyone ever told you to stop um surprisingly no do you think there's I anything think, I wrong think with where it? it really started to um take its toll is we went so we went to the 7-eleven right and they have these candies that are now discontinued called Mystery Monkeys. And we went into every 7-Eleven trying to find them, referring to them as Mystery Monkeys. And the cashiers got really confused. They were never mad about it, though. They were just confused. Has it ever come out in an inopportune moment, like a date or a job interview? Um... It has. Um, definitely in work a couple times. Um, and I kind of just play it off. I think we all just kind of play it off. But Do you think it affects how people perceive you? It, it's starting to become my personality, I think. Does that scare you? It does a little bit, yeah. I don't want to be known as the Mon guy, you know? What would you rather be known as? Um, I want, I want to, I want to be known as a historian. Um, specific, specifically, uh, like a music historian. That's what I'm studying in college right now, so. Maybe the next time you think you're going to say man, you could bring up an interesting music history fact instead. That's a really good idea, actually. Do you have any for us right now? I'll have to try that. Um, did you know that um, when the Rite of Spring premiered in the early 1900s, there were riots? That's pretty interesting, man. Indeed. Well, hey, man, I, I appreciate the advice. Um, I've got to get going. Um, to everyone else out there, just don't even start saying, man. It won't end. Thank you for calling. Thank you, Gek. Call from Topher. Hello. No fucking way. What's going on? Uh, not much. What's going on with you? Uh, your name is Topher. Yeah, something like that. All right. What's going on with you? Just got off work, and I've been trying to call you for a long time. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Oh shit. Well, no, that's exciting. Being nervous is exciting. Um. You know, it means there's your body is telling you that uh, something important is happening. I mean, I don't know if this is important, but... I'm just excited uh, to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you, Topher. What's going on? 
I wonder if I smoke too much weed. I wonder that myself. Let's talk. What's uh, how often you smoking weed? Mm, like every couple hours. <laughs> uh, all right. You know what's funny is I always forget that weed is bad for you. I've talked about this a bunch of times, but I always forget well, I don't that know it's if bad it is. for That's you. That's the thing. It's I shut up. It's shut up. Weed. Shut up. Weeds. No, weed no, no, is no. not. It's, it's, it's not no. good. It's not. Uh, right. I don't care I what Reddit says. And I and listen. No. I listen. Lie. I smoke weed every single day. I will not say that it's good for you. Okay, I don't. Maybe it's not good for like your organs, but I truly believe that it helps me mentally. Okay, and like that's it helps fair. me, and it helps me. So I got really bad ADHD, but and I can't like think or like get a get like a solid thought out or like I'll stutter. But then I get high. And then I can think about one thing at a time, and I can have like a solid conversation. Like, right. It probably wouldn't hurt me to get high right now. All right. Um, are you not high right now already? You said you smoke every few hours. Well, yeah, but it's been probably like an hour and a half or an hour. All right. And I don't know, like, man. I'm not. I'm not a. So I'm not a doctor. I don't. Um, well, I, I don't know what. Uh, um. Yeah, you know. I know that you, you know, this is what I, I knew you were going to say this. What, that I'm not a doctor? Well, I thought, I, yeah, I thought you might say this. Tell but me, you, tell me. Yeah, yeah. Do you, okay, so t tell me, um, you thought I was going to say, what were you going to say in response to what you thought I was going to say? Well, fuck, I don't think I went that far. Um, yeah, no, I definitely didn't go that far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe I didn't, I didn't think ahead that you were going to say that. But when you said it, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like something you would say. Well, what I mean, do you do you feel as though weed is negatively impacting your life? It's negatively impacting my bank account. Yeah, how often how much money are you spending my, on weed? Like rent, like eight hundred to a thousand bucks a month. Then that's gone down to it used to be. What state like are you in? What state are you in? Washington State. All right, is it legal there? Yeah, we got good stuff here. It's like the one of the first states to become legal. How much weed do you smoke in a day? Well, I smoke dabs because I've smoked like every day for like seven years. And so the weed stopped affecting me after a few years. Or like, mm -hmm. I mean, it affects me, but no, it doesn't get me like as high as I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I smoke dabs. I have a Puffco. Have you ever heard of a Puffco Peak? A Puffco Peak? Dude, if you, do you ever dab or do you only smoke weed? Uh, I mean, I smoke like the pens. I haven't, I haven't done the whole dab with the nail and the torch thing in a long time. Yeah, but the Puffco is like a portable vaporizer, and it's got like a battery in there, and you just oh. got a little bowl. You put the dabs in there, and then you, it just stays in the cup holder of my car, and it just gets used like obsessively. Well, all right. I mean, so wh how old are you? I'm 22. Okay. Um. Do you? What do you do in life? Right now, I paint houses, and it sucks. I hate my job. Mm, what do? You, what would you rather be doing? That's the thing. I don't really have like too much passions. Like I honestly am pretty passionate about weed, but it's hard to get into the profession. I also really like money because I like to travel, and I can't really travel without money, and I can't make money working with weed. Where do you? Where would you like to go? That's like, uh. Next on my list is like Japan and Africa. I want to go cool. to those two places. I've been to like almost twenty countries. Cool. Um, but you got to be careful bringing weed to the countries. That can get you in trouble. Oh yeah, like bringing weed into Japan. Mm-hmm. I never. I want to say. Japan. I want to say Paul McCartney did that. I want to say Paul McCartney did that, and it didn't work out. Did for he? Him. Did he get in trouble? Paul McCartney. Yeah, he got caught. I think so, but he's, you know, he's Paul McCartney, so nothing bad can ever happen to him. Well, that's what they said about Brittany Griner. I don't know who that is. Well, oh, that's, that's the, the fucking, like, that, wait, that's the lady who got arrested in Russia for the weed yeah, pen, right? Yeah, yeah, you got I it. I think about her all the time. I think about her all the time, actually, because I'm always bringing a weed pen places. I, but, um, I actually got arrested for international drug smuggling. Where did you smuggle drugs? So I didn't. I didn't. I got arrested for it, but I didn't actually do it. Why tell me that story? Okay. So I was living in Norway at the time. And I made a bad decision. I was on, like, some substances. 
and I couldn't afford to pay for them. And so the guy who provided them said, okay, you don't got to pay if I can order like another package to your name, you know, on the, on the dark side of the internet. I didn't tell anybody about this for like four years, but I think I'm safe now. I thought they tapped my phone for like a year. I didn't talk about it, but okay. Anyways, um, uh, where was I? This is that ADHD I was talking about. Oh yeah, but then the package came and the, it was like three weeks later and he was like, and then the package came, but it got confiscated at the border because uh, the dogs or something. And then I was just like chilling at the school and the police came and got me and they said, hey man, we have a warrant to search your phone and your room and like all of your belongings that you have in the country. Oh, well, fuck. But, and so they took me away in the handcuffs and they interrogated me. They were like yelling at me in Norwegian for like four hours. Like, we know you did it. Like, like just tell us, or like, and I was like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. They're like, okay, well tell us who did it. And then we'll like take down your sentence. So like, I don't know, I don't know. But then there's no proof. So I didn't get arrested. Or so I didn't go to jail. But it was like one of the scariest, pretty scary. What were you doing living in Norway? Uh, I was going to school there. Oh, okay. After high school, right. I moved there for like a few months to, because I didn't, just for fun. All right. So you're a, you're a traveling man. I try to be. I haven't gone in like a year. And I okay. Think now you're just, now, I, now I you live gone. in Washington and you're painting houses and you hate it. Yeah. I mean, this is where I've always lived. This is like the home base, but I'll, I'll move. I'll like, I'll do you have Do you have any money? Uh, right now, not a lot. But after I finish painting this house, though, I'll get paid. I got like a solid check coming after I finish this house. Because you don't need, dude, you don't need, I, I, like, I don't know how much research you've done, but you don't need like a lot of money to travel. You need, I think the, the biggest, your biggest expense is going to be well, like the plane to get there. But if you go to like, you know, Asia or, or somewhere like uh, really cheap, you can get around for not that much money. And there's also all these like little programs and whatnot where you can like go work at a hostel no, or I mean, yeah. work on a, a, a teach people English or all these all these things. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm know thinking because like if I if I were you and I just had like no I mean, I guess I can also do whatever I want. But like, what I don't know that you could why not? Why not? Why, why would you stay in Washington painting houses when you could feasibly cobble something together that gets you out on the on the road traveling? You know, have you have you tried you to do anything like honest, that? The I do it. Yeah, tell me the honest truth. And this is why people think I smoke too much weed. Okay. Because I wouldn't go because there's like I would have to go to a country where weed's legal. Like I couldn't go without weed. In the last seven years, I didn't smoke for like forty hours. And for those whole 40 hours, I couldn't eat or sleep or, like, I was feeling crazy. Like, I'm pretty dependent on that on that stuff, you know? I, I'm pretty sure in, like, Thailand. I'm I'm so dumb and I don't Thailand, know the... Thailand, that's true. I've been, I've been to Thailand and they have pretty decent weed there, actually. Go to Thailand. Yeah, but, fuck, what am I going to do there? How am I going to make money? I don't know. Uh, if, uh, teach English and to what people. What the fuck or, am I going to do or... in Thailand? I, mean, I don't know. What the I fuck wanna... are you going to do anywhere? At, what do you... What, I, I'm... What are, what what are we gonna do with our <laughs> lives at all anyway? What are we gonna do? I have no. What, what are you supposed to do? God damn it! It's, I'm I'm freaking out with you, my friend. What are, what are we supposed to there's, do with our lives? I don't know. I have no idea. That's, there's nothing to do. I think life is pretty pointless. But that's why I like traveling because it's kind of fun and it's like it is kind of fun, entertaining. Have you ever spoken to a real therapist about all this weed thing, all this weed stuff? Mm, no, but I don't think that's the real problem because like I smoke weed and I actually am pretty. Uh, I'm like the most productive stoner you've ever met. Like high functioning. Like I get my shit done, you know. It's, unless I don't smoke, but I don't get my shit done. Like I wake up at 4 a.m. and take a dab and then go to work and like work the whole day, you know. Okay. Are you um are you un but you're unhappy with this um with this job and with this life that you're living? Is that accurate to say? This job kind of sucks. Yeah, for sure. Like I don't enjoy the work, but it pays me good money. Okay. I mean, I'm trying to think what you could change. You know, if you want to travel, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have like something that's else that's weighing you to live in Washington? Uh, yeah, I guess I do have a girlfriend. <laughs> most, most, uh, the the answer to whether or not you have a girlfriend is usually yes or no, and not yeah, I guess. I do. I mean, she's pretty fresh, like a month, so it's like 
not too held down yet, you know? All right. Are you happy with your relationship? Yeah, she's cool. But that's that man. That's fucked up, too. I don't know how much time you have. There's a little, that's fucked up, too, though. What, what, do you mean call back sometime. what do you mean it's fucked up? Well, like, okay, she's super cool. And, like, she's actually dope. But I didn't know. Like, my best friend, I didn't know before I started dating her. My best friend took her virginity. And that, like, fucks with my brain, dude. I don't know if I can, like, stay with, like, I don't know if I could, like, like, theoretically, like, you date to marry, right? I don't know if I can, like, the sentence, my best friend took my wife's virginity, like, that does not sit. That is not a very good sentence. Um, but how did you meet this person? Just, like, through mutual friends. Okay. Do you like her? I do. She's actually super cool. That's, what I'm, that's why That's why it's fucked okay. with me. Because if I didn't actually like her, I would have just, like, dropped it already. I just... Uh, uh, look, I, I, uh, I get that, like... Whatever. I get that dudes have hang-ups about things like that. But, on, on a, look, on a personal level, it, to me, like, if you like this girl... The, look, on a personal level, to me, if you like this girl, then who gives a fuck who she's had sex with before? Well, yeah, but that's like, I don't know, because that's like my best friend, too. And like, I, I'm just, I'll be uncomfortable if like, because I want my girlfriend and my friend to be able to hang out. And like, I wanted like, and like, I trust them. Yeah, but like, I definitely feel some type of way if they're hanging out on their own, you know, not on their own. But like, I don't know, even if like they're just talking, like it makes me feel weird. Um, But I need my girlfriend and my friend to be friends, you know? Okay. Um I feel like Look, this is a, I mean, this is a whole separate conversation and maybe that's why you didn't want to bring it up, but to me it's like you you have to build up some sense of security of like I trust my girlfriend and I trust my friend to uh you know, I I I love my girlfriend. I trust her not to cheat on me. Right, and if you're just constantly yeah, insecure too. about whether or not she's gonna cheat on you, that's 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 a problem. No, that's the thing I do. Like, I don't think she would, but it still makes me feel weird. Like, I do trust mm -hmm. her though. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I think it's just like the male, like anatomy, like what it's called, like psychology, just doesn't like it. Okay. Um, it. <sighs> Yeah, this is this is dude. This one stumped me too. I don't know. I, you know, talking to you. You know, I've I've been I've been enjoying talking to you because you, uh, as I talk to you and I think about your life and your problems, I I kind of get out of my own. You know, and I'm like, I was saying, but I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. Um. Hmm. Like is 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 it a deal breaker? What I that your like... what that your girlfriend had sex with your friend before you guys were dating? Well, yeah, but it's like he took her virginity, which makes it like why did you, here's the, why I just uh, uh, whatever everyone's I I get that guys have you hang ups about things, but I and but to me it's like dude, if you this shouldn't be more complicated then you two like each other and make each other happy so you're together you know why why are you overcomplicating this with the fact that she lost her virginity to your friends how long ago I, even was that i don't know like 4 or 5 years like that was a while ago okay so then what's the i don't get why you're hung up on it i, I i'm an overthinker man my brain's always moving like a million miles an hour. That's why is it the weed? Like, what? Is it the weed? No, the weed calms it down. Um, it's the ADHD man. that makes my brain go crazy. Buddy, you should see a real therapist at some point. I, I, uh, have you ever thought about doing that? Um, no. People have. 
my mom's always told me too. Like my, like people have told me too before, but I'm like, eh, I don't know about that one. I don't really like the thought of paying somebody to talk to me. I also feel like I can probably figure it out on my own eventually. Well, what are you going to do, might man? Take, might take a little longer. What am I going to do with the, yeah, what are you going to do? What? Just what do you, I don't know. Just what are you going to do? We've, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about your relationship. We've talked about your desire to travel. We've talked about weed. We've talked about your job. What are you going to do? I mean, I'm probably going to go smoke weed. <laughs> Why? For some reason, I thought that you would say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to do. Um, Is there anything else you wanted to... And I'm not even saying this like to end this conversation, but is there any other aspect or anything at all that you wanted to talk about? Damn, I mean, probably, but I'm not going to think of it right now. My brain's like... I'm going to get off the phone and I'm going to be like, damn, I should have asked him this. But no, it's okay. I guess not. Okay. Try not to... Try not to hold yourself back with, like, random bullshit. If something's between you and being happy and calm, at least make sure it's, like, a worth worth being a, a, a barrier be- between you and that and not just, like, a, a bullshit thing. Is that is that a, is that make sense? Is that a fair thing yeah, to I say? Mean, no, I mean, yeah, that's fair. I overthink a lot and, like, make up. Things that get in the way that probably shouldn't even be there. Me too, man. And I'm sure a lot of people listening to this do as well. Well, on that note, I hope you get, you're going to ask me if I have anything else to say to the people at the computer. Yeah, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer? I hope that everybody doesn't overthink too much and gets a little extra high today. Have a good rest of your entire life, my friend. Thank you, Gekko. Have a good night. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. What's going on? Well, at this moment, I am feeding my son little apples. Um, I baked them in the oven with butter and cinnamon, and yeah, and they're all soft, and he likes them. How are you? That sounds very delicious. Um... I'm okay. I'm actually I'm feeling uh, better today than I have been, so that's good. For that's good. What's different me. about today than other days? I, you know, I um, well, I left my fucking room to go uh, be in places that are not my room. I did nice. some push-ups. I meditated for like a second. Feeling good. <laughs> Working on myself. Um, that's good. Meditating is great once you really start to get into it for, I think, just relaxing and your mental um, kind of focus. So, but yeah. What is your name? My name is Sophia. So, Sophia, um, what's up with you, man? Is there anything in particular you called in to want to talk about? Yeah. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, I hope uh, no one I know watches this stream, but um, my fiance and I, um, we, uh, a while ago, uh, we, uh, gosh, this is weird to talk about. Um, We made the decision to uh, obviously have a baby, but uh, the thing about that is um, we told my parents that... um, (laughs) <laughs> that he was an accident and I had uh, at the time I, I had an IUD and everything I, I, I don't know if you know what an, uh, that form of birth control what that really is mm-hmm. do you know what an IUD is yeah sick um, and uh, the copper IUD is like 99% effective and we had said that I was at 1% that actually did get pregnant <laughs> off of the uh, non-hormonal IUD and uh, my son is now six months, and they think that he is a uh, miracle from God. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we don't know when or if we are ever going to tell my parents or how we will go about that. Um, but yeah, so we've been just kind of living off of this lie uh, for a while. And like the thing about that is, we told my parents in like November. Um, that uh, I was pregnant and I didn't actually get pregnant until January 
And I don't know if they, like, if they know if they ever, like, did the math in their head and, like, just didn't care or if they just never thought twice about it. And I had them okay. in August. So, so wait, so you, yeah. you convinced your parents that you're, like, the Virgin Mary and that you're a child, <laughs> that, like, uh, your child is a gift from God or something. Yeah, we didn't say that, uh, but that's how they took it. Here's and what yeah, I don't understand. So, the funny thing is we do actually know people that have gotten pregnant off of uh, the IUD. So it's not something that's like completely crazy, um, but because it has happened. Um, so we just kind of took that and um, used it as our own. Really, is the IUD only, is it like hand sanitizer where it's only 99.9% effective? Yeah, especially if it's non-hormonal. If it moves, it's, you're very likely to get pregnant. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, versus the hormonal one, which is even more effective. But I just had, long story short, I've had a bad uh, reaction to hormonal uh, birth controls. And so I uh, stuck with the non-hormonal IUD. Um. So, okay, here's what I don't understand. Why did you tell them that it was an accident? What was the point of that? Um, because, so... I am uh, 21 years old. I'm pretty young. Um, okay. And uh, so is my fiance. My, fa- my fiance is even younger than I am. Um, mm. And uh, he, so uh, I got pregnant when I was 20. He got, and he, um, you know, is, uh, became a going soon to be father at 19. Um, and my parents, um, so they are very like, they wanted me to live my life the way they wanted me to live my life. You know what I mean? And uh, when I was in college, um, I'm, I'm currently going to a CC, but um, I was going to a university originally because they just really, really wanted me to go to university. They, I don't think they even really knew what that meant. They just were like, college, 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 college. You need to go to college here when you're not, not going to go to college. Um, and uh, they paid for it, which is, of course, very kind of them and generous um, to be wanting a good future for me. Um, but I didn't even know what I wanted to do at a university. And um, I've been with my uh, now fiance for uh, going on three years. And um, we wanted to move in uh, uh, like wh- my freshman year in college. And uh, or like at least the next year we were talking about it when I was a freshman and I had told my mom and she just flipped the fuck out and uh, she was like, absolutely not. You're not doing this. And I think I was 20, 20, 19, 20 at the time. And um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of like a small thing that had uh, that had happened. And um, uh, because I also knew that. Um, they would never, they would never approve of uh, me wanting a child so young, um, and uh, so this is the only other way to go about it. And it's kind of, we're kind of glad that we told them early on, even lying about it, um, because uh, they ended up having. Um, I, we had several fights with them about the way I wanted to raise my child, and um, because they thought that the way I wanted to raise them was incorrect. Um, so, so, so what I'm, I guess what I'm kind of curious about is, uh, d- so you told them that your child was an accident because yeah. you felt like that would, uh, like take the blame off of you for deciding to have a kid. Yeah, a little bit. And, and that, and that <laughs> the, the idea, is- so, so, so in your mind, so in your mind, the idea for your parents that you kind of just messed up and got pregnant mm-hmm. and are following through with it is ha- right. is an easier pill for them to swallow than me and my fiance decided to have a kid so young. Yeah. And, um, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. And we didn't even tell them that we were, you know, even engaged at that time. My mom and dad were like, <laughs> um, uh, uh, they were like, Oh, like, do you guys want to get married? Cause we were talking about getting eloped. And so they even tried to throw a whole, wedding for us and we were going to we were planning on getting married in hawaii and all this stuff when i was about five months pregnant um but the thing about the uh, anyways that's kind of beside the point um okay well well let me ask you this um i mean how are you how are you doing with the kid are you how old is the kid 
he's about uh, he's going to be seven months. Uh, he's doing phenomenal as well. We uh, my fiance supports okay. us really well. We are all very happy and healthy. Um, okay, so you're yeah. ha- you're happy with your decision? Yeah, we are. Okay, we great. kind of we kind of like uh, uh, think to ourselves in that every now and then like, damn, we, maybe we should have waited, but we always see the other side. Like, we would rather be young parents that way. When um, our child is old, is even like five, six years old, my my mom and dad were older when they had me. Um, they were uh, my mom was uh, over thirty, my dad was um, forty, uh, so. And I just remember when I was young, like my mom, my dad had a bad back, and you know what I mean. And sure. like he couldn't go on the roller coasters with me, or like my mom was just, you know, not wanting to do uh, some of the things that I wanted to do when I was a kid, like running around with doing this or this, and that kind of thing. So okay, we made that decision of doing uh, raising a child early, and then uh, when we're like forty, he's going to be twenty, and um, we'll be able to. Uh, do our own thing as well have the rest of our lives to do things that we want to do and we felt secure enough to uh, have a child okay Mm -hmm. okay um well that's good that you're happy with your decision um so i mean look like i mean uh are you are you having like stress over the fact that your mom doesn't know that uh you you made the decision to have the baby um, I guess I kind of have some guilt sometimes um, about lying to her, um, but um, I don't know how she would have taken it if I had purposely, if I had told her I purposely had a had a child rather than, it, it, oh yeah, I remember the thing I was going to say. She almost sees it as like a noble thing because like, um, because he seems like an accident. I, um, it's look, it looks noble because like, okay, I'm taking this and I'm, um, I, I'm having a child now, and I'm taking the responsibility rather than, um, I don't know, I don't know. But she, uh, after I told her that I am deciding on keeping the child, um, my son now, um, that she would, my her, and my father would always be like, oh, like we're so proud of you for taking this on and making this decision, and uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Oh, I, the reason why I asked if it makes you feel any stress is like, I mean, do you think it would make you feel better to just tell them the truth? Um, I don't know. Um, I think, sorry, my son is banging his feet against this little chair. Um, I, um, but I, it's, sorry, could you repeat the question? Um, are, do you, would it make you feel better to tell them the truth? Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I think it, uh, it would take stress off my mental in the long run, um, but uh, right now um, it's nice uh, having a decent relationship with my parents. I feel like that would really put a it would fracture our relationship, really. Because um, I've uh, when I was younger, I was like so complacent with my parents and would just do really whatever they told me. Um, and when I got a little bit older, um, I started you know having a mind of my own. And um, I think this would really kind of set them over the edge. And um, sorry. What is he so pissed off about? I don't understand why babies are always, they got got a great life. I don't know what they're upset about. Yeah. You made them um, apples. uh, Yeah. (laughs) He's actually so happy about the apples. (laughs) I said he's banging his feet against the chair. Mm -hmm. Um, But, um, shit, I'm sorry. Um, uh, okay, so okay, so so you uh, the 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 question of whether or not to tell them the truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, now I don't think so because um, they are just so happy that he's here. Um, that yeah, they take every opportunity to see him. Um, and there's no really stress on on any of us. But I don't know if that's like just if it's a uh, moral thing to really live out the rest of their lives with this lie <laughs> that their mm-hmm. grandson was a, was a miracle that he mm-hmm. made it through the IUD. Um, I mean, I but, guess yeah. in my look, I, I guess in my head, like to declare yourself mature enough at 21 to have a kid is like a big thing to do. It's a yeah. confident thing to do. Um, I'm glad I look, 
I'm glad it worked out for you from from yeah. how it sounds. I'm happy about that. And so if you have the confidence at that age to decide you want to have a kid, mm-hmm. um, you know, I look, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to tell you what to do, but uh, I, I would think you would have a, a, a similar confidence to just live your life how you want to live it with you know truthfully and not be so you know um scared of what your parents might think yeah 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 that's true but again uh, you know uh, uh, it it doesn't sound like you're being eaten alive every night by the fact that your parents think your kid was an accident um, no. But uh, so then, you know, again, the decision's up to you. It doesn't sound like a very dire thing. Right. I guess it's just a story I kind of wanted to talk about, too. <laughs> it's very, well, it's very interesting because it's such a subtle, like, I, I, even through talking about it, I still don't f- fully understand. Well, please, uh, if you have a few questions, I'll answer. Or, or I can, um, I don't know, uh, fill in any blanks that I, mm-hmm. that I missed, that, I, that you feel like mm-hmm. I missed. Um... What is your name again? Sophia. Sophia. Well, mm-hmm. Sophia, listen, I'm glad that I'm glad that your decision sounds like it it worked out for you, and um, I hope you continue to live live happy life. Thanks, Gex. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, I guess if I don't know if you're gonna end up putting this on the podcast or not, but if you do, um, hello, Jason. Um, that's my fiance. Um, and, um, well, forever. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Take care, Sophia. You too. Bye, guys. Call from... Marquise. Hello? Hello? What's up? I have a story for you of past life. I am living a whole different life now, and I have kind of repressed this whole thing. But are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so me and my girlfriend... I was 19 and she was 18. Um, We became escorts. Well, I was an escort and she was one too. Um, And what we did was we just used, um, we used like these websites that I shouldn't name because of dangerous uh, condemnation, I suppose. I I don't want to condone my actions because I had a friend try to do what I did and they got uh, robbed at gunpoint. but basically what I used to do when I was 18 and 19 was I used to just use these websites where you go on sugar daddy dates and stuff, things of that nature. And I would like go out with guys. Um, Cause like it's, it's mostly men paying for this kind of shit. It's not really women. Um, and so I was doing that. And when I had met my girlfriend, she was doing it as well. Um, and that was kind of what our like initial conversations were about, actually, was just like, oh, wow, we use the same websites, we do the same things, you know, all these things. And so we like we bonded through that in a way, because, you know, I, I when I met her, it was mostly just about, you know, forming a friendship and forming someone like uh, forming a relationship potentially as well in the future. But then it was like, oh, shit, like we do the same thing. This is crazy. And so we built a bond through that and we just went out into the world going on going on dates and um i don't even know where to start um but we basically i mean we've seen it all both of us and it was uh quite weird and because it's a it's a really weird world and i I, did you have any questions i could answer for you um hmm so how old are you now i'm 26 i just turned 26 uh in august How long were you doing this for? I was doing this for from 18 to about 20, partially when I was 21, um, but I stopped. I took a break. Um, The reason why I stopped doing it in general, and and this is the crazy part, too, is like when I was young, I I, I didn't really have much prospect of like an idea of what I could do. And it was like, well, I'm cute. So like, let me go out there and like go on dates with men and stuff and things of that nature. Cause I'm also like, and, 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 and I was pansexual. And so like, it was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go do this shit. And it was never anything. Uh, you, uh, you can use like explicit language on here still, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So it was never anything um, sexual. Like I and like there were times like I would see guys and like it would lead to a sexual encounter. But for the most part, it was just like dinner with guys in L.A. Uh, L.A. and like um, I was in mostly um, uh, L.A. towns, L.A. region areas. Um, and then sometimes I would go to like the Bay Area and such. And there was a time when me and my girlfriend were living in New York and she was seeing guys in like lower Manhattan. Um, and I would, um, I would literally, cause I, at, at that point it was like, she was making way more than I was doing it. And I was like, well, why don't you do it? And then I can watch you. And so I would literally dress as homeless as possible and just like sit outside restaurants and just like watch her. And it was, mm. it was really interesting cause I'm, I'm not really a jealous type. Um, and I'm not really like a, a person who like, and, and I, I, I trust her in general too. And it was just so interesting because when you go on these dates, you're conforming to an audience, you know, you're not, the, you're not the person that you portray yourself as, you know, you're a whole different person. You're just whatever they want you to be, you know, cause they just want someone to talk to and someone to tell about their life story and someone to go places with, to like looks cute and dresses the part so that they can feel elevated. Cause most of these people are really lonely. And it's about the fact that like, they're trying to purchase um, companionship. That was mostly it for both of us. Um, I mean, like, there were times when, like, I did like some guys, and I think she liked some guys she saw, too, in the past. We both stopped doing it because it just became a... And, and I, and I want to stress this to anyone who's, who's doing that in general. Like, there is a way out. We stopped doing it because it became the situation where we just felt like it was really affecting our sense of pride and sense of self-worth. Because that's the thing, like, you're just whatever they want you to be. And that same thing went for, like, our adult content Stuff too we had an only fans and we had a porn hub account are you are you and this girl still together oh yeah it's been six years now and wow. it's been amazing and i love her and i love her family and i am so happy we have a house together and we have two cats and um we also have two geese and two turkeys and it's really great and she's going to school for uh she's in the tech field she's going to school for tech stuff and I have a really cushy, boring job. And we honestly, we talk about it sometimes, but we kept it very secret from our family. So I always get scared whenever I talk about it with people because it was something that like I kind of repressed, mostly because it just like it, it wouldn't really resonate well with my family or her family. Do you do you ever miss doing it? You know what the issue is with that actually is that I do. I think I missed doing both of those. The money was really easy and it was really convenient and the money was like really great. It was very seasonal, you know? Your best times to do it, the best times in my opinion were like the winter time it was and the, the holiday. the winter, right? That's when everyone... Yeah. Everyone's yeah, that's, really That's a uh, cuffing season. Yes. And then everyone, there's like no one with anybody. So I do miss it because it was like, honestly... And, and it kind of burnt me out in a way, too. Like, it was the only time when, like, I was around exuberant consumerism, you know? Like, we got gifts. My girlfriend used to get, like, really expensive perfumes and stuff and, like, bags. And, like, guys would take both of us, like, individually on, on our own dates. Like, we'd go to, like, really fancy restaurants. And, and, like, we as a couple, we'd never really gone to fancy restaurants. But also, like, none of that really mattered to me. Like, I didn't care about the bags or the restaurants and things of that nature because it wasn't really... It was nice, but it wasn't really real. And I feel like it, part of it kind of killed my whole desire to, like, do bougie things. Like, now I live in, like, a really basic house, and I live a really, like, financially conservative lifestyle because I just kind of realized from all those things that it's just not really worth it, you know? Did anyone ever take both you and your girlfriend out on dates at the same time? No, no. But my girlfriend did go on a date with her friend one time because her friend was like, I want to do this. But she was like, I don't want to do this alone. So my girlfriend was like, well, we can go on a double date with some guy. And it was absolutely horrible. And that I've heard all horrible. people doing that kind of thing. Well, because like the more people it is, because like no one wants to. OK, typically speaking, mostly people are paying about like four to five hundred dollars per person, like for the dates, for like an hour of date. Now you're trying to sell somebody on paying that for two people on a date and the only people who are going to want that are going to want something afterwards you know so like the guy they went on the date with was just like egregiously like you know over sexualizing them and like you know just like creeping the fuck out and so 
once they got that money, they ran off because it was just like a. I don't, you know, I oh, guess that's one of the things I don't, I don't really understand about like the, the seeking arrangement thing is like these the people. These people are mainly paying for like platonic. Uh, like it's they're playing for like they're paying for like platonic um, uh, companionship, right? Mm-hmm. In in some ways, it's kind of like written off at that as that in some ways. But what they really want is a prostitute. Like that's why I never really use seeking arrangements uh, because it's one of those websites that I feel like is you know like it's like this conversational game of like finding people who just want to hang out. You know, because a lot of them on like uh, a lot of people on seeking arrangements just want a prostitute. They just want someone to pay whatever amount of money yeah. and have dinner, which is bizarre then- to me because it's like if that's what you want, why don't you just hire a prostitute exactly exactly but they want someone more innocent they want someone you know because like prostitutes use prostitution websites and then people who use seeking arrangements are like college kids and things of that nature younger people who like don't really know about that world that scary world of prostitution and things of that nature Mm -hmm. so it attracts a different audience of like um providers you know and they know where to go to find what they want which is kind of the creepy part too because like once i got older it became, you know, a bit different because it's like, you know, they, they don't want, they don't want someone who has their shit together. They don't want, they don't want someone who knows what they want in life. They want a lot of these guys, which is, I mean, like, you know, it's mostly guys. They just want someone who they can use, who they can manipulate and, you know, all of those things. And, and it's just really, um, yeah, it's really quite sad. Do, um, did you ever go on any, any dates with any sugar mamas? No, and I remember there was this one time that there was this one girl who did want to do that, but, you know, like, the people, the sugar mamas who were on there, they want sex, because they they know that they have a, a specific niche that they feel, which is the fact that, like, men who would typically do this with women are typically willing to have sex with them. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm making uh, rash analyses, but I, 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 I've seen a few of them. But they want sex. They know what they want. And, like, they usually, like, from what I... I remember getting the most, like, grimy, just scary messages. And then also, it just, like, whenever I, like, would see them, it just came off as, like, this, like, cover for sex trafficking. You know? Like, some like some Ghislaine Maxwell type shit. It just kind of scared me a little bit. Or they want to, like, have sex with you in front of their husband. Or just weird shit like that. It just... it it, 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 it It's too dangerous, in my opinion, whenever I see a woman on there. Fascinating. Hmm. And now you're you're working at a desk job. What do you have any of the money saved up still? Are you are you doing any? Um, <laughs> we like, were so horribly irresponsible with that money. Mm-hmm. I mean, we still have some of the items we bought for sure. Like um, what? What's the most expensive thing that you that you kept? Um. Okay. Fuck. Well, that's okay. So, I. There was this one guy my girlfriend saw, and we got. Uh, uh, well, you're a, you're an LA person. You know Le Labo, right? Do, do I, I know what? The perfumery. And, okay, the, so Le Labo is this perfumery, and they're based out of New York. They have some places <laughs> in LA. It's like a really bougie, like really bougie perfumery. Yeah, like, I don't a, know like a whole a, lot about uh, the local pur- perfumeries around here. I see. Well, the the big bottles are like three hundred dollars, I think. I think the guy. One of the guys had connections and got us five bottles. And I gave them to various friends. And I told my friends, because they didn't know what was going on. I was like, yeah, I have this friend who works for Le Labo. And he got me perfume. So each one of those was like 375 I think, like the big bottle. And I just gave those to various friends. And I still have one of the bottles because it's like a really big perfume. And then uh, designer handbags and such too. Like I got this, I got this um, Chanel bag and a few other things. Um, and then things of that nature, just miscellaneous designer items or like sunglasses too, designer sunglasses, mostly things of that nature. Why my, my girlfriend got me a pair of, uh, Gucci sunglasses, but she framed it as like, she wanted them. So she asked, cause like the guy was like, send me your Amazon wish list, And then she sent him, um, some, like a wishlist item for like a bunch of d- 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 designer sunglasses. And then she was able to get me that. And that's kind of the game we used to play sometimes. We'd be like, oh, oh, this guy gets on the switch list. What do you want? What do you want? You know, type situation. And then we'd talk about it together and see, okay, well, we, we, we should get this and this. And that was really fun. But when you, when you become an old man, you know, uh-huh. do you, do you, if you, and if you're lonely 
and maybe you, maybe your girlfriend's not around anymore. What would you do? Would you ever pay somebody to go on a date with you, or would you join like a elderly tennis club? I think I would. I and I because I know internally I have a kink. Like I love older people, um, and so I think that it'd be like, well, I'm old, so now I can really get the older people. But I don't know, you know, I think about that and it's just like, mm. it's different um, when you're, I was talking to my grandma about this because we're talking about, you know, like what it's like, 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 like what sex and, and things that nature is like as you get older and older. And she was just like, well, once you get past your 60s slash 70s, it's just, it's not the same, you know, and it's like you appreciate like slower things and things of that nature. Wait, who were you talking about I, this with? My grandmother. And she was you're talking, talking to your about, grandma about sex. Well, yes. We were talking about how as you get older, you lose that ability. She was kind of drunk, so she was just having this really open conversation. But she was talking about like how like when you get older, your 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 ability to do such things is, is different. So like, mm. you know, you just hang out with people, or like you just sit around and stuff. And and I I I really can't tell what my future holds, but I know that a lot of the older guys just wanted to like breathe in youth you know it's something that they're not used to being around anymore because they're older and most people around them are older so is they um seek out what they can't have is your great is your grandfather a lot around no um my both of my grandfathers on my mom both my parents side are like deadbeats is your grandma having a lot of sex i don't know she's um she's always been um she she has like eight husbands, I think, and like each husband has like a different kid with her. So she has like eight kids, each one with a different husband. So so she's a pretty wild character. Um, well, if look, it doing. sounds it sounds it sounds like she was just bluffing when she's talking about how you can't do that much at that age if she has eight different kids with eight different husbands. It's possible. I don't know. She's a very secretive person, and I think it's just you know different era. She's like from the forties. Yeah, she's born in like nineteen thirty eight. So like you know she's from a whole different level of like conservatism and like she sounds not cool about she's cool as fuck yeah she's cool she loves talking shit about people i i come up her house sometimes and she'll just talk shit about anybody in my life and it's just like wow you just whenever i'm gone you just talk shit about me too yeah probably cool like yeah that's what grandmas do they talk shit about their kids and their grandkids yeah. and stuff but that's okay though i don't think it it matters um, it's not like ill will I what's your name again uh my name is dante Dante. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's weird. Like, if you have, if you like older people, if that's kind of your thing, it's like, what are you gonna do when you get old, man? Then, because like, if you're eighty, the best you can do is like, you know, a ninety-year-old, maybe. Maybe I don't know. Be I mean, fairly limited. Us as men, it's a bit different. The privileges that like. Because, like, the thing is, is, like, I mean, it's, it's commonly talked about, like, the dating pool for men kind of gets larger and larger as you get older, whereas dating pool for women gets smaller and smaller as they get older just due to, like, gender issues and, like, dichotomy of sexualization of, of different genders and things of that nature. But, um, yeah, because I've seen, like, a fair share of older people who are fucking drippy as hell. Like, um, there's plenty of, like, old men who are out there in the world who are just, like, cool as hell and people are just like, wow, I want to be like him when I get old. You know, and well, you know, Dante. Cool. Um, I, is there any other like aspect of this or anything that you want to share before we go? Um, Let me ask I the chat that... if they have any questions. Chat, okay. anything you want to ask to Dante before we go? Nervous Squirrel says that your grandma sounds like a baddie. She is. Um, she's pretty cool. I, I, I don't know if I can talk about my grandma's looks. That sounds pretty J scary. Jamin Baker wants to know if you like Dr. Pepper. Um, I don't really like soda, actually. I drink a lot of wine, though. Um, but there was something I did want to say, um, and that is that if you get into this lifestyle, I see so many people who just get shit on for doing OnlyFans and things of that nature or doing adult content. And it seems as though a lot of people feel like if you do that, there's no way out. And I, I truly think that there is a way out um, because as time goes on, there's so much saturation of adult content creators. And I guess it varies on like, you know, how popular you, you become. We had a, you know, relatively sizable fan base with our content creation. 
Um, but, you know, once we were done with it, we deleted everything. And, you know, there was a little, like, period of time when, like, people would, like, DM me on my personal Instagram and things of that nature and be like, oh, what happened? What happened? And I kind of scared me. So it was like, oh, shit, they, they know what's going on. But there is a future outside of that if that's what you want in life. And do not put yourself in a box and feel like you can't do other things with your life because you did Just this, you know, real taboo quick. thing. Uh, Emily Bays wants to know, how was the sex with rich men? Um... Hmm. Okay. Pretty good. Um, not as vigorous. It's like I'm trying to think of it in a non weird way. It's like whenever you like shake an old man's hand and it's like strong as fuck, but like not moving fast. That's what sex with old men is like. It's like strong and like, but like it's not embracing. You know, like, it's not like scary, like how like younger men have sex where it's like all oh, vicious and crazy, like. Older men are like they're firm, but they're and it's um, it's also very conservative. You know, like they don't want to do any like weird shit. They just want to like you know have normal sex, and it, they're not they don't last very long. And they just they're it's very simplistic. And oftentimes for me, it was in like foreign cars and such, like in the back seats while their drivers are driving. It was kind of weird. Um, well, I, I remember one time I was oh yes that's it. Oh uh, sure, if you if you have a story about having sex with an old man, you can you can tell it real quick. Okay, I mean, I was just uh, in the backseat of this guy's Rolls Royce. It was a Phantom, I think, the four-door one. Um, and his driver was driving, and we're having sex in the back seat. And it was just really weird because there's a fucking person in the front seat, and it just, like, that never really felt normalized to me. Um, but it was pretty fire, honestly. Um, and I saw him a lot. He was pretty cool. He was pretty respectful, too. But, yeah, that was, that, that was lit. Well, how did, thanks for calling, Dante. Did this? Um, how did it feel to talk about all this? Uh, scary. I've never talked to. I mean, this is a pretty big audience that you have, and I've never really talked to anyone in my life about this. So it's nice to be. It's nice to have anonymity and talk about this with somebody and to like, you know, honestly, I just wanted to get this off my chest and talk to other people and, and let and let people know about this kind of thing. And I really appreciate the platform that you provided me to do this. I I really appreciate your work that you do as well. Oh, and I thanks, thank you very man. much for your time. Thanks, man. I I haven't seen your work, but I'm sure it's it's pretty rad too. <laughs> I try my best. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate this. Of course. Take care, Dante. Bye bye. A Rolls Royce. I always thought a Rolls Royce was a watch. I didn't realize it was a car. That's <laughs> that's that's my only comment on that story. Uh. Thanks for calling, Dante. Hello, folks. It is Lyle. We are at the end of this episode. But get this. I'm about to play a clip before we go from this week's bonus episode, which is a live show that I recorded in front of 500 people all the way over in Sydney, Australia. Bonus episodes are available to premium Supercast subscribers of Therapy Gecko. Subscribers also get access to all episodes ad-free, all currently existing bonus episodes, multiple new bonus episodes a month, and other fun stuff. If you want to sign up to become a premium member, you can go to therapygecko.supercast.com or find the link in the episode description. Anyway, here's a little bit of this week's bonus app. All right, Sully, you texted in because you wanted to talk about, um, you said, my mom gave my girlfriend permission to peg me. Yep. Now, did your... <laughs> did your girlfriend give your mom permission to watch no uh, <laughs> i fucking hope not no <laughs> uh tell me tell me about this re this relationship your mom has with your girlfriend where she's gatekeeping your asshole <laughs> um i guess i guess i'll preface this by saying my 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 uh my mother is a is a sex love and relationship coach oh um, okay that's got to be weird for you yeah you wouldn't believe it yeah <laughs> Everyone's like, hey, you know that kid from Sex Education? Like, oh, 
You know it. Wait, dude, your mom taught sex education at your school? No, fuck. I, oh, okay. no, I'm About, so thankful for that. That would suck if she taught with you in the class. Yeah, this was a later thing that came on. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, so it started off, um, me and my partner uh, and a few friends do a thing called Wish Miss, which I highly suggest everyone do. It's like a secret it sounds band. like it hasn't worked out for you. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's very funny. So uh, you do a secret Santa, but you're only allowed to buy things from the site called Wish. I don't know if you oh, know Wish. Oh, yeah, sure. You sure. know, crack pipes, you know, $5 PlayStation 5s, yeah. dildos, all that sort of shit. Yeah. Um, all, all in the one place. It's fantastic. Wish Edward Cullen. There it is. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so for my, for, for my person, they gifted me a present. They gifted me a, uh, you know, obviously Sully from Monsters, Inc., um, the, it was a, it was a butt plug, but it was with the Sully tail. <laughs> if you want to see this full Australia show, you can go to therapygecko.supercast.com to sign up now and become a premium member, or find the link in the episode description. All right, that's it. I have nothing else to say. Um, I hate recording things. Um, I, I think I probably um, fucked this recording up and restarted it at least five times and it was really stressful. So I'm going to go play Red Dead Redemption for six hours. Thanks.